In this video, I will show you how to enhance your FreeCAD experience and take it to the next level by improving the graphical environment, making it more visually appealing with a modern, cleaner look. Then I'll show you how, by using the right peripherals, the best keyboard shortcuts, and some powerful macros, you can double your modeling speed. And stick around until the end because I have an amazing gift for you to win. I'm Delta Edra and I'm here to help you boost your productivity in FreeCAD. Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, so, the video's got quite a bit of info, so I've split it into chapters. I'll start by showing how to improve your user interface. If you're here to speed up your modeling workflow, that's in the second part of the video. The first time you open FreeCAD, you'll see the initial pop-up window asking you to choose a theme, a language, a navigation style, and so on. You can continue while keeping the default settings. Since I mainly use the part Design Workbench, I'll click on the parametric part icon to start a new project. The first thing you'll notice if you're new to FreeCAD is that the interface can feel pretty overwhelming. There are windows and panels everywhere. This can be quite confusing, especially if you're coming from another software like Fusion. So the first thing we're going to do is clean all that up. By right-clicking on the menu bar, we'll uncheck all the toolbars we don't use or rarely use. In the end, we'll only keep structure and the part design tools checked. Of course, if there are tools you use frequently, you can leave them enabled. As for the view tools, we can access them by right-clicking in the viewport. For me, the remaining tools are the most important ones for modeling in part design. We can reorganize them by aligning them next to each other. Simply click and hold the left mouse button on the separators and drag them side by side. The viewport is starting to breathe a little easier now. You'll notice a drop-down menu in the top left that contains all of FreeCAD's native workbenches. The default setting is a drop-down menu, which is great for saving space, but it can be a bit inconvenient at times. We're going to change this drop-down menu into a tab-style menu. To do this, go to the Edit menu, then click on Preferences. In the window that opens, locate the workbench line and click on it. To change the layout of the workbenches, go to the Workbench Selector Type setting and choose Tabbar instead of Combo Box. In the window above, all the workbenches installed in FreeCAD are listed, each with its own specific features. In my case, I don't use all of them, so I prefer to limit the ones that are displayed. I'm going to uncheck most of them, keeping only assembly, BIM, draft, part design, part, spreadsheet, surface, and tech draw. These are really the workbenches I use the most, the ones I use for 90% of my projects right now. Now, I'm going to check the autoload boxes for all the workbenches I've kept. This allows me to use the tools from each workbench without having to open the specific workbench. I can then click on Apply in the bottom right of the window. FreeCAD will now load all the settings, which takes a few seconds. Don't worry if you see the window flicker. You can then click on OK. Be very careful at this point and make sure to click on Restart later. If you don't, you'll lose all the toolbar arrangement we just did. Make sure to click on Restart later. I know it may seem counterintuitive, but to apply the changes, we're going to close FreeCAD by clicking the cross in the top right corner. When you reopen FreeCAD, you should see that the settings have been applied. Before continuing, close the welcome page from the BIM workbench and click on parametric part again. The toolbars are now all on the same line. We're going to move them back down to the lower row. Once that's done, right-click on the menu bar and select lock toolbars. To apply this layout to all workbenches, simply open each of them a few times and it should become consistent across all of them. You should now have the different workbenches on the first row and the specific tools for the active workbench on the row below. This is already better than the default setup. Now let's focus on the model and task panels. Right now, both menus are combined in the same window. This can be useful for having a larger viewport, but in some cases, it's more practical to have them separated, especially when you need to select an operation or a sketch. Separating them also makes the interface look more like other CAD software. We're going to move the task panel to the right by clicking and holding the left mouse button, then dragging it to the right side of the window. You can snap it wherever you want, but I recommend placing it on the right side of the screen. Now, we're going to install a theme for FreeCAD that will really help make everything look much better. Simply go to the Tools menu and select Add-on Manager at the bottom of the list. A welcome message will appear. You can leave the default options and click OK. You'll need to wait a moment for the Add-ons menu to load. It takes just a few seconds. Click on the drop-down menu filter and then choose Preference Pack. Here, you'll find different themes that you can use in FreeCAD. I won't go through them one by one, so feel free to test them out. 
I'll choose the open theme, which is the one developed by the Ansel team. I find it to be the one that most closely resembles a modern user experience. To get it, simply click on Install in the top right. Wait until you see the message confirming that the theme has been successfully installed, then you can close the add-on manager by clicking the cross. To install it, simply go to the Edit menu and then click on Preferences. In the window that opens, go to the theme setting and change it to an open one. There is a light version and a dark version. Both are great. I usually use the light version during the day and switch to the dark version at night, but it's really up to you. Select one of the two variances and then click Apply. After clicking Apply, you'll need to wait a moment for the theme to load. The window might flicker a bit, but don't worry, that's normal. You should now see that the UI colors have changed to a gray tone, which is less harsh on the eyes. You can click on OK to confirm. You can now see that the workbenches in the tab bar have a button-like appearance, and the icons are a bit more spaced out. Now, we're going to make the model and task panels transparent to complete the modern look. You need to click on the square icon next to Model to toggle the transparent mode. You can also click on the round icon to make it non-transparent again. Repeat the same operation for the task panel to make it transparent as well. To further customize the UI, you can try the Ribbon UI or Modern UI add-ons, which allow for deeper interface modifications. Feel free to test them out and see if this type of layout suits you. Just make sure to back up your preferences beforehand. As for me, I'm sticking with the default layout. I'm going to load one of my previous projects now and show you two tricks to make your viewport more realistic. The part I'm going to load is the bike hub I made a tutorial for. You can find the link to the file if you'd like to follow along with the course. It's perfect for beginners. The first trick is to add a temporary texture to the part. To do this, go to the view menu and select texture mapping. In the menu on the right, click on the three small dots and load your texture. In my case, I use a grayscale gradient texture to give a shiny metal appearance. To apply the effect, you need to check the environment box. The effect looks better. You can also combine it with a color by changing the color of the hub cage, for example, to give it a gold look. To do this, select the object, then in the view properties at the bottom left, change the shape color to a golden yellow. I then make the full assembly visible again and change the display mode to shaded. By right-clicking, then selecting Draw Style and choosing Shaded. Now, if you want an even more striking result, you can try the 1.1 dev version of FreeCAD, which introduces three-point lighting. I'll let you compare both, on the left, version 1.0, and on the right, version 1.1 dev. The difference is pretty striking. I think you now have several options to make FreeCAD's interface more visually appealing. Now, let me show you how to speed up your modeling workflow. Generally, to model a part in a conventional way, you have to make multiple clicks and go back and forth in the menu bar to select different tools, which can be a real-time waster. To work much faster, FreeCAD allows us to assign shortcuts to all available tools. And this can be a great way to speed up your modeling workflow by carefully setting up the right shortcuts. I'm going to show you how to set up a shortcut for the pad extrusion operation. Go to the Tools menu and select Customize. In the Category tab, select Part Design. You can then find the tool by scrolling through the list below or simply typing Pad in the search bar. Next, you need to set a shortcut. When modeling, your right hand is on the mouse, while your left hand is usually free, often resting near the Shift and Control keys, which are used for navigating the viewport. That's why I always recommend assigning shortcuts within the green zone on the keyboard. This helps you maximize speed by minimizing hand movement. I also suggest using key combinations with Shift and Control to stay within this area. Avoid shortcuts that require both hands as they force you to take your hand off the mouse. The orange zone is acceptable if the shortcut can be done with one hand, but it's best to completely avoid the red zone. For our example, the first shortcut that comes in mind is E. As it's the first letter of extrude, it's easy to reach and later on I can assign Shift plus E for the pocket operation, which is the opposite of the pad. So I will go ahead and type E. You can see that this shortcut is already assigned to other operations. This isn't a problem when those operations don't execute in the same workbench which is the case here. So you can click on Assign and then Close. Now let's test if the shortcut works. First, delete the pad operation by pressing Delete, then select the sketch and press E. And now the magic of science. 
the pad operation is executed as expected. We can now try a key combination like pressing eFollow by the extrusion height and then enter to save even more time. Now imagine all the shortcuts you can set up and the time you can save. I've included a PDF of the keyboard shortcuts I personally use in the description in case you're interested. And if you're on Windows, you can download my configuration file and have the same settings. We can take automation even further by creating macros. To simplify, a macro can be a single operation or a series of operations. For example, in our case, I might want the extrusion operation to be done symmetrically. Unfortunately, creating macros is not easy when you're not familiar with coding. I've attached the macros I've configured and use most often to speed up my workflow. To load a macro, you need to go to the macro menu, then click on the word macros. In the window that opens, you can see the path where your macros are saved. Since you just downloaded the latest one, you can click the three small dots to load the folder where you stored your macros. I recommend creating a specific folder that is easily accessible, where you can save all your macros. You should then see the pad symmetric macro appear in the central window. If you want to assign a shortcut to it, you must first create a toolbar icon for it. Click the toolbar icon and then let FreeCAD guide you through the process. You can enter several parameters to describe your macro, even assign it an icon for better presentation. To keep this tutorial simple, I'll stick with the default options and click Add. Then, I click the Close button. In the second window, I choose the workbench where I want the toolbar with the macro to appear. In my case, this operation only takes place in Part Design, so in the drop-down menu, I select Part Design. I then click New to create a container for the macro. I give it a very original name, like Macros. I then click on the arrow with the red background to import the macro into the macro container. You should see the macro appear in the toolbar. You can now close both windows by clicking on Close. You'll notice that two macros were created. I don't have the answer as to why or how this happened, so let me know in the comments if I did something wrong. I delete the pad operation to test the macro, but first, I will assign it a shortcut. So go back to the Tools menu and select Customize. In the Category tab, scroll to Macros and then select Pad Symmetric. For the shortcut since it's a pad operation, I'll give it a variant of E, like Control plus Shift plus E, to stay in the same theme as the previous shortcut. Now, if I select the sketch and press Control plus Shift plus E, it should perform a symmetric pad operation relative to the sketch plane with a dialog box asking for the extrusion height. Thanks to macros, we can create many shortcuts to save time or access functions that aren't normally available through the FreeCAD menus. I've attached a macro that lets you perform a pocket through all operation, as well as macros that allow you to switch between different workbenches. You can also find macros in the add-on manager. I recommend the FC Infos macro, which provides lots of useful information, like the mass of your object. Another useful macro is created by OpenBrain, which allows you to have a spreadsheet open on a second screen. The download link is available in the description. I think this is one of the most useful macros for me because it saves me from switching between workbenches to see the effect of my changes in the spreadsheet. I consider it a must-have if you work with spreadsheets. With this macro, I can move the spreadsheet to a second screen if I want to. I've only scratched the surface when it comes to macros, there's an entire ocean of possibilities. Let me know in the comments which macros you use the most. Up until now, I've only talked about how you can improve your speed from a software perspective, but it's crucial to also discuss peripherals. On the screen, you can see the tools I use the most. Starting with the mouse, I recommend using one with multiple buttons so you can assign various shortcuts. I use the CAD Pro mouse from 3D Connection because it has programmable buttons and dedicated software for CAD programs. I'll come back to that later. Next on the list is the keyboard. I think having a numpad is essential, even indispensable. I recommend using a mechanical one for a satisfying typing experience. Here, I'm using blue switches, which produce a loud click. Next, I use a tablet as a macro pad, where I've set up all my most used shortcuts along with a numpad. This setup allows me to model entirely without a keyboard. It's more than just a gimmick, it lets me work in a more relaxed way. And when paired with the 3D Connection Space Mouse Compact, the experience is really great. The Space Mouse is pretty much the star of my setup because it allows for smoother navigation and makes working on assemblies much faster. It's truly a high-quality product, 
and at this point, I'd have a really hard time going without it. If you're wondering how I achieve these smooth, fluid rotations, it's thanks to this device. Additionally, I want to thank 3D Connection for sending me these products, and I'm teaming up with them to give you a chance to win a Space Mouse Compact Wireless. To enter the giveaway, just subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave the word caveman in the comments. You must be located in Europe or North America to participate. The Space Mouse will be shipped to you directly by 3D Connection. The giveaway runs until April 6th, so don't wait too long. The Space Mouse is truly the perfect companion for modeling, as it allows you to perform rotations and zooms that would be impossible with just a mouse and keyboard. And thanks to its two buttons and dedicated software for FreeCAD, you can assign any function or macro, as well as a radial menu that you can customize, and that adapts depending on the workbench you're in. The situation where it really shines for me is during an assembly with multiple parts, like assembling this kitchen cabinet, because it's often tricky to reach the attachment points. Whereas here, everything happens effortlessly. I'm going to show you how I set up my mouse to speed up my modeling workflow. Thanks to the proprietary software, I can easily assign the functions I need. If you have a programmable mouse, you can map the keyboard shortcuts you've set up in FreeCAD to it by using your mouse's dedicated software. For the sketcher, I assign the center rectangle tool and the point tool to the side buttons. For the middle button, I set up a radial menu with the drawing tools I use the most, polyline, circle, rectangle, and b-spline. If you're interested in radial menus, you can create them directly in FreeCAD by using the Pi menu add-on. It's a bit more complex to set up than the 3D Connection one, but you can get a similar result. I want to have my drawing tools on the mouse and the constraint tools accessible through the keyboard shortcuts. Now watch how I can quickly draw without having to go back to the tools in the menu bar. This saves a lot of time, especially when combined with the constraints keyboard shortcuts. For part design, I've set up my two macros, pad symmetrical and pocket through all on the side buttons. For the middle button, I added the operations I use the most, including the measure tool, which is really useful. Just like in the sketcher, you can see how quickly I can perform an operation, and having quick access to the measure tool is really a game changer. As a bonus, I use the MacroDeck app on my tablet to set up all my shortcuts. It's a futuristic way I enjoy using to model in a more relaxed manner. The setup is pretty simple, but it takes a bit of time, so I won't show it to you now. Let me know if you'd be interested in a tutorial on how to set up your tablet as a dedicated macro pad for FreeCAD. To finish the video, I'll do a quick comparison for modeling this part. It's just a small link, easy to model, that uses the basics of 3D modeling. On the left side of the screen, I'll model it using all the techniques I've shown you so far. On the right side, I'll model it using only the menus, no shortcuts or macros. If you'd like to try modeling the part yourself, you can download the drawing from the link in the description. I start by drawing the primitive shape of the part using the circle tool and the polyline tool. As we can see just on the first sketch in its creation, the combination of keyboard shortcuts and the mouse already gives a huge advantage. To create a symmetrical pad, I use the macro I've bound to my mouse. It's really a huge time saver. Between the time it takes to click on the icon and adjust the settings in the right menu, I can already move on to another operation before the one on the right is even finished. If you're wondering how I did the pocket through all, I use the second macro on my mouse. You don't have to do it through a sketch, you can easily select a face and create the pocket. That's what I'm doing here. As you can see on the left with the shortcuts, macros, and space mouse, I've already finished the part, while on the right I'm barely halfway through. Also note that I'm not very fast, I think with more practice it's possible to go even faster. If you've modeled the part, feel free to let me know how long it took you. I'm sure there are people who can do it much faster. If you're wondering how I created a rectangle with rounded corners directly, all you need to do is check the box in the right menu or press the U key. All that's left to do is the pocket through all, followed by the symmetry, and I'll be done. I think through this example, you can see the benefits of using shortcuts, macros, and the right peripherals, whether it's for speed or comfort. I tried a new video style this time. Even though it's still about free CAD, it's different from the usual tutorials I make. Feel free to let me know if you liked this format. I hope the video helped you learn something or at least entertained you. And don't forget to enter the giveaway if you want a chance to win a fantastic Space Mouse Wireless. Thanks for your attention.